Hey everyone, today we're talking about sets in JavaScript. Just a quick note up front, uh, I'm working hard to put out one to two videos a week for the next few months, a little experiment. So please subscribe if you're interested in seeing those updates. Uh, but also if you have any ideas or suggestions for videos you'd like, please leave a comment. This video on sets is the result of a comment that someone left last week. Lastly, I'll have an update on my baby chicks, my little chickens at the end of the video if you care. Let's get started. All right, so here are the notes I made for the video. Uh, you can find the link in the description. I'm trying to post more one to two times a week for the next couple months, but I cannot promise I'll have these detailed notes for every single video, but here they are. And there's a lot of stuff here. We're gonna go through all of it. We'll start with the basics. What are sets? Uh, why, what do you need to know about them? <laughs> what are the main methods, the properties, the things we might wanna do with them? And then we'll finish up by talking about why would you use them? What situations are they better than something like an array? And I'll show you a couple of examples. Let's start with the very basics. Sets are a data structure, a new-ish data structure. They allow you to store a collection of values. Those values can be anything. But the really, really important thing you must know, the single most important thing about sets is they only store unique values. And sets often get lumped in with arrays because they are collections of data. There's an order to a set, but the order is nowhere near as important as it is to an array. Arrays are indexed, so every item has a corresponding index. We can retrieve elements using that index. Sets are different. They are ordered by insertion order. And sets do not support random access, meaning we can't say, give me the last item or the first item or the 10th item in this set. In addition, we can't reorder sets and there are far fewer features and methods in a set compared to array. If we look at the docs for array on MDN, tons and tons of methods over here, maybe 30, 40 methods. But if we look at sets, we've got like seven or eight. So far, far fewer methods, they're much simpler but they can be very powerful in certain situations, which we'll get into. And before I forget, let's talk about browser compatibility. This is actually pretty good these days. As always, Internet Explorer has some red, but usually it's a lot more red when we talk about newer features in JavaScript. So I'll point out as we go certain things that won't work uh, in IE. So as I said, sets are a collection of unique values. And the first thing we need to do is learn how to make a new set. Unfortunately, there is no set literal or shortcut syntax. You know, to make an array, we could do new array like that, or we can just do square braces. With a set, our only option is new set. And that makes us a new set. So that makes a completely empty set. We can save it to a variable. What we can also do is pass in an iterable. So for example, an array. Here's an array of two items and those two values will be added to the set. So the iterable item we pass in will be iterated over, each value in it is added to the set, and that's really the only way we can initialize a set. So we can't do something like this. We can't pass in a number. It tells us number one is not iterable. We can't do true or false. We can't try passing in a bunch of numbers as different arguments, what we can do is pass in an iterable, like an array, or if you wanted to, even a string. So we could do dog, and that gives us a set with three items. It iterates over the string for each character and adds each character in as a value in the set. Also note that this iterable syntax is not supported in IE. It was one of those red pieces right here. In Internet Explorer, you can only do new set and initialize it with no values. And then you can go back and add one at a time. So let's see how we do that. To add items in, it's really easy. There is an add method. So let's try it over here. I'm gonna make a new variable, annoying hashtags equals new set, and I'll initialize it with two values. Well, one value, an array, which is iterated over to add two values to our set. And we end up with two values. So to add one in, we just call dot add. And I can pass one more in here. Let's do a string again. I don't have to only store strings, but it makes sense in this case. We're storing hashtags. Now I have three items. So add works differently than this right here. When we initialize a set, if we pass in an iterable, it iterates over it. When we add to a set, whatever we pass to it, 
will be added in its entirety. It's not iterated over. If I try to do something like YOLO again, there's no error, but you can see our set does not grow. Remember, sets are collections of unique values, so we can't have a duplicate. Now I could add in something like the number 12. That's added in. I could add true. If I try and add true again, it's not added. We already have true. Also, if I add an array, as I kind of talked about already, that entire array is added as an item. You can see it here. Okay, so that's add, nice and simple. So if we wanna know how many items are in a set, we use size. We don't use length, we use size. So come over here, annoying hashtags, dot size. Well, if I can spell it right, and there we go. That's all there is to it. It's just a property, not a method, it's a property. Next up, let's talk about a method called has. So has is a Boolean method, and it tells us if a set contains a given value or not. It's really nice and easy, and it's actually very, very fast. We'll talk about it in just a bit. Well, at the end of the video, compared to checking if a value is contained inside of an array, has is really efficient. So if I wanted to check, does this annoying hashtags contain, does it have YOLO, I would do this. It does. Does it contain the hashtag foodie? It does not. Now what's great about sets compared to arrays is that if you saw my big O notation video, this will make more sense. Sets are O of one, they are constant time to figure out if a value is in a set to run the has method. If you compare that to an array, if we instead had an array, let's just do numbers for a moment. Here's some random numbers. If I wanna know if this array contains the number one, I could use index of, for example, or the newer includes method. JavaScript is going to have to check every item and look for one. Are you one, are you one, are you one, and so on. And that could be at the very end of the array. It could not be in the array, but it's going to have to check the entire thing. So as my array grows, if I have 10,000 items in here and I'm looking for one, the number of operations it takes grows with the size of the array. Sets are different. It might seem like they work in the same way that in order to tell if YOLO is in here, we would have to check every single item. But in reality, the way that sets are implemented is they use something called a hash map where YOLO is run through a hashing function. I don't wanna go overboard here. I'll do a separate video on it. All you need to know is that it basically takes a single operation to tell if YOLO or any other value is already in the set. It's much, much faster. Next up, we can talk about removing values. There's two ways, really. We can delete a single value using delete. So I can show that here. Let's delete uh, true. So annoying hashtags dot delete true. And if we look at annoying hashtags now, we can see it doesn't contain true. And then the second way of deleting things is clear. So the clear method is really simple. It just empties the entire thing. So knowing hashtags.clear just gives us an empty set. It's the same set we had before. It's just been cleared out of everything. So set zero, it's empty. And that's pretty much it for clear. The last feature we'll talk about is that sets are iterables. They are iterable objects, so we can use them with things like for loops, for of loops, the spread operator. So the first thing you should know is that sets are technically ordered. They are ordered by the order you insert things in, insertion order. You can't add something to the beginning or the middle. You're only adding to the end. So here's a simple for of loop. I have annoying hashtags again. I put in some of the hashtags I really hate. See, I, I don't like hashtags in general, but these are the ones that annoy me on Instagram and other websites. So we added selfie, blessed, and no filter. The set has three items in it, three values, and I can run a for of loop. So for let val of annoying hashtags, console.log, please don't use each value. So it looks like this when we run it. Please don't use selfie, please don't use hashtag blessed. Same thing for no filter. All right, so that's the basics of sets as far as the API, there's really not much to it. So now let's talk about the real important thing. Why would you use them? So they are not a replacement for arrays in general. They are a replacement for arrays in very specific situations. So kind of the things that I think about if I'm considering using a set, one, you're working with unique values or you need to get unique values from a non-unique data set. 
And I spent a little bit of time thinking about when I tend to use sets, and here's a couple situations. The first is a really simple, easy one. When I have non-unique data, and I wanna quickly remove duplicates. So this is a very simple example. I'll show you something more realistic in just a moment. I have an array called missed calls. It contains names of people who, let's say, called me in the last 24 hours, and there are duplicates. If I quickly wanted to get the unique callers, figure out how many people called me in total, not the total number of calls, I could use a set. If I didn't use a set, uh, I would need to iterate over the array. I would need to keep track of, for example, Kevin, and put that somewhere. And then as I iterated, each name, I would need to check. Have I already seen this one? Have I seen this one? Have I seen this one? Oh, I've already seen Kevin, ignore that. I've already seen Kevin, I've already seen Stevie, and so on. But if I use a set, it's really, really easy. I can just do new set missed calls. And if I wanted that to be an array instead, I can use spread, I have a video on that from last week, to get it back to an array. So here's a more realistic example. This is from an app I built for one of my courses earlier this year. It's a Yahtzee game. If you're not familiar with Yahtzee, basically you roll five dice and each die can be one to six. So let's say this is a hypothetical die roll. One, five, five, three, two. That could be a roll of dice. There's five of them. They go from one to six each and we need to evaluate if this is a particular hand. If it's a five of a kind, a four of a kind, a straight, a full house. And we can use sets to make that very easy. So for example, a full house is two of one kind and three of another. So we could have something like this. This is a full house. We have three fours and two fives. So to evaluate that, we can use a set to help us out. As you can see up here, we just make a new set and we check if this size is two because that tells us out of these five elements, the five dice, there are two unique numbers, meaning you have three of one and two of another. Or to check if there's a five of a kind, like one, 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 we just make it a set and check if the size is exactly one. And the last one is a little more complicated, is large straight, meaning that we have five consecutive numbers. So we could have something like this right here where we have one, two, three, four, and five. But if instead we had this, this is not a large straight. It's one, two, three, four, and then no five, but a six. So to test that out, let me go back to a valid one. I am first checking that the size of the set is five. That's the first bit. We need to make sure there are five unique numbers in here, but also we need to make sure there's only a one or a six. There is no valid straight that includes both one and six because we only have five slots. So I'll quickly test this out. We'll do is full house, give it an invalid full house like that. We get false, but if I make it a valid full house like this, we get true. We can do is large straight and we could have, for example, six, four, three, five, two. That is a valid straight, but if instead I have one, it's not valid. So this is a real example from something I was doing recently. Using a set really helps me out to quickly figure out how many unique values are in the dice. Now there's a second common use case that I found, at least in my own life, when I'm storing unique data and want to easily check other values against that unique data. So the example that I was working on a while back was a tags input in a React app where users could type a tag and hit comma and it would create a new tag for them. But with tags, you can't tag a video or a post with the same thing twice. So if you add HTML, for example, it's already in there, so it's not going to be added. So that's very easy to do using a set. Now this is not uh, a full React implementation. I wanted to make this video sort of framework agnostic. Uh, I'm actually probably going to build that tags input in a separate video, uh, intro to React video, but this is sort of modeling it. I have a class called tags input. We have a set that we're using to keep track of the tags. And every time you add a new tag, we just call set.add, and then we're going to print out the tags. So if we tried, let's run this first. If I tried to do input.add tag of HTML, the first time through, your tags are HTML. If I tried to do CSS, your tags are HTML and CSS. If I try and add HTML again, it's unchanged. So this is very simple, but this is essentially what I was doing in this React app where I'm using a set 
to figure out what to actually render here. Now to wrap up, I'd like to talk about the time complexity, basically how fast the efficiency of sets versus arrays. And this is really just for two operations that I wanna talk about. Uh, first is insertion, and then second is searching or checking to see if a value is present. So asking, does this array have a five or does this set have a five? As you can see here, uh, if you don't know big O notation, by the way, I do have a video on that, but also this is gonna be very simple and straightforward. Sets are fast, they're very fast at inserting new values and checking if a set has a value. Arrays, on the other hand, are not as fast. Depending on how you add to an array, if you push to the end, it's fast. If you are pushing, or if you're unshifting, if you're adding to the very beginning, everything has to get moved over. Everything gets shifted over and gets a new index, and that is slow. Same thing for checking if a value is present in an array. It takes a long time. If you have a thousand elements, you would potentially need to look in 1,000 different spots. Uh, and that's why it's O of N, as the size of the array grows, N, the amount of time it takes to search also grows. Sets are different because of how sets are implemented with hash maps. When we want to check if a value is present, the set is not checking every other value. It's doing one operation. So here is a quick benchmark I put together. Uh, this is not very uh, official. I'm just using console.time. If you're not familiar with it, it's really not that precise. But as you'll see here, it, it doesn't really matter because the difference is so stark. So what I'm doing, I have two functions. First, I generate a really long array. This is what, 100? No, this is a million elements. So a million elements in an array, each one a random number from zero to 4,000. So there are definitely duplicates in that 1 million numbers. And what I wanna do with that million number array is create a list of unique numbers. So using a set, it's super simple. I just create a new set with those numbers. With an array, it's a little different. I need to make sure that if I'm pushing to the array, that value is not already in the array. So I made a little class to help me. I have a property called values, which is where I'm storing the actual values in array. I look for index of, so does one number exist in this array already? If it doesn't, then we'll push that number on. But if we get to a duplicate number, then we don't do anything. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm building a set of unique numbers from this array or an array of unique numbers. And if I run this right now, you can see our set already finished, 26 milliseconds. The array took 2,575 milliseconds. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, here are my baby chicks a week later. They're growing very fast. <laughs> and they're looking kind of awkward right now with their fuzziness. Their feet are sort of horrifying to look at. If you look too closely, those weird feathers, but they're kind of adorable. Uh, this one in particular, I don't know if they're, they're sex yet, if they're male or female, but I call this one Junior. And he or she is very cute and loves to eat from my hand and falls asleep in my hand. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, blah, 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 you know what I'm going to say. Please like it, subscribe, leave a comment. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to put more weight behind this YouTube thing. I can't do it full time. I've got a couple other jobs and, and things going on. But I'm doing my best to devote a couple days a week to making these videos. So I appreciate it. Uh, have a good day and bye.